ಶ್ರೀಗುರುಂಷ್ಣವಾಗರಜಾತ ಸಹಗಣಾರಘುನಾಥಾಂತಂಪಂಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣಪದೇಕೃಷ್ಣಕರುಣೀಧವೋ ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಸ್ತೂಪೇಶಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗೇ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವಿಷಮಾನೋಚಿತೆ ದೇವಿ ಗುಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಪಂಚಕಲ್ಪತರೂಪ್ಯಸಿಂಧು ದೇವ ಪತಿ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇದ್ಯೋ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭೋ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀಯದ್ವೈತಗದಾಧಾರ ಶಿವಾಸಾಧಿ ಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಐ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಟು ವಾಕಿ ಕ್ಲಾಸಸ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ we are on chapter 2 of the bhagavad gita and the chapter is entitled as contents of the gita summarized and uh, the last two times we have been discussing on uh, the concept of karma yoga and if you remember last time we discussed about the various characteristics of a karma yogi and the characteristics of a karma bhogi and today we're going to be discussing the benefits of practicing karma yoga we we'll started that and then we'll discuss a few other things also so krishna speaks a very beautiful words in this place where he talks about the various benefits of karma yoga and uh, one of the concepts that he speaks about is um uh, this is in verse number 40 of the second chapter he says swalpa apyasya dharmasya prayato mahato bhayat so the first benefit of a of being a dharma yogi is the word swalpa the word swalpa uh, in kannada or even in sanskrit it refers to very small and in this particular context it says swalpa apyasya dharmasya prayato mahato bhaya it says that whenever someone does takes a small step in this direction which direction dharmasya the direction of dharma in the direction of following the process of krishna consciousness or the path of karma yoga what happens it says prayato mahato bhaya it saves one from the greatest danger mahato bhaya now what is the greatest danger that krishna is speaking about it could be many things but of the many things the greatest danger from a spiritual point of view is forgetting krishna at the time of death that is the greatest danger from a spiritual perspective life is a is a preparation and death is an examination what we prepare for our entire life is tested in one moment at the time of death and if somebody practices krishna consciousness spiritual path even a little swalpam apyasya dharmasya such a person at the time of death gets delivered from the greatest fear the fear of forgetting krishna now usually if a student begins to uh, begins in a small way to study engineering suppose just to give you a contextualize this suppose a student uh, begins to study engineering and uh, 
you know, um, he makes small beginnings, but then he does not attempt more and more. Will the university really take him or give him a degree? No. If you either you complete it, even if one small exam is left, you can't get the degree. You might say, I answered 49 exams. One exam, just forget it, Baba. Just let me go in this one paper. No. Every single paper you have to answer and clear. Only then you get the degree. But in the path of Krishna consciousness, that's not how it is. Even a small beginning, even a small service will be accepted and rewarded by the Lord. And not only that, Krishna helps you clear the exam. It's not that you know you are you go and attempt on your own. Whether you pass or fail is not Krishna's problem. No, Krishna actually helps every student who gets into the degree, you know, to, to study the path of Krishna consciousness. This is a benefit of Karma Yoga. You serve Krishna with what you have. Even that one small service that we do for Krishna will get us his blessings. He will reward us with devotion and he will reward us with opportunities to serve him. There are so many examples. So many people have become devotees of Krishna by small beginnings. And those small beginnings were not even seva. They were criticism and making fun. Let me give you some examples. Like one of our brahmacharis in our temple in Radha Gopinath uh, is Kanchapati. So um, before he joined the temple, he was working in a in an MNC. And uh, there were many people who used to make fun of him. Because many of the workers in that company, they came to know that he is a Hare Krishna person. He's chanting and all that, you know. So, I'm sure uh, if anybody has a little spiritual inclination also and you're in an atmosphere where nobody else is spiritually inclined, so you kind of become an object of ridicule many times. So, one, one person who was working in that factory, whenever you would see that, you know, devotee pass by doing his work, he would just randomly look at him and say, Jai Shri Ram, you know, just to make fun of him, just to kind of tease him and make fun of him. Over a period of time, this particular devotee, he kept looking at this guy calling Jai Shri Ram, Jai Shri Ram every time he saw him. So in his mind, he thought maybe this person is really interested in spiritual life. He was not at all interested. He was only making fun, basically. But this devotee took, took him very seriously. And every day, he would go and sit with him and start talking to him about Krishna consciousness. And over a period of time, without him even realizing it, this fellow who was just making fun became a full-fledged devotee. And he actually became very inspired in the, in the path of Krishna consciousness. And even today, he says, I made fun of him that day and it has costed me my whole life. <laughs> of course, he's very happy that he is practicing spiritual life. But Krishna sees that small beginning and rewards the small beginning. In, a, in the Bhagavatam, there is a very nice shloka that puts this in a beautiful context. It says, Sankhetyam parihasyema stobam helanam evava vaikunta nama grahanam ashesham agam haro vibho. This verse says there are different ways of different reasons why people chant the holy names. It says Sankhetyam. Sankhetyam means Sanket means indicate. Just an indication towards Krishna is enough. You don't even have to chant the holy name, but just indicate something that sounds like the holy name. Enough. Krishna will give you the benefit of chanting the holy name of the Lord. Uh, like for example, there was a man who was uh, a Mohammedan man who was a uh, Going to, going to the forest. This is like the olden times, a few hundred years before. He was going to the forest to pass tool. Taking his lota and went to the forest. You know. 
and he was sitting and doing his job and a and a wild boar boars you know pigs are all interested in stool right so this pig was really interested in what this fellow was passing you know and the pig came running from behind and hit him at the back and this guy fell off in the front and while falling off like hurt very badly with the tusks of the wild boar and he loudly shouted haram haram is a bad word in you know uh, in uh, the language but now this is not even he is not chanting the name of ram he was saying haram but this is called sanketyam that means this is not even the holy name this is just an indication of the holy name but you get the benefit whether you are actually chanting the holy name or no you just doing something that sounds like the holy name krishna is so kind he will give you the benefit of that also this is known as sanketyam then there is something known as parihasyam parihasyam means making fun of the devotees there are many people who just make fun of krishna's devotees by chanting krishna's names um like you know when many brahmacharis is walk on the streets there are people who are walking along or you know in the railway station and all that they just make fun hare krishna hare ram dam maro dam hare krishna hare ram anything they will say basically just to make fun basically even they get the benefit whether you are doing it for fun or you are doing it just indicating the holy name of the lord you will get the benefit in the west uh, many years back in america they made a video game a very interesting video game you know and uh, this is in the 70s and 80s this video game you know what was the, what was the video game about you will be amazed the video game was basically a car racing video game and this is the streets of america the video game is like you know the new york streets basically and on the streets of america in the middle of the car track you will find hari krishna devotees with their hands raised in the air singing and dancing over there and if the car bangs on one of the devotees you get extra points so these guys they would make the they so all these young boys they would hit the hari krishna devotee and the devotee is falling off and while falling he makes a sound he says gauranga and he falls and these boys who were playing the video game without realizing every time they hit a devotee and the devotee would fall off they would also shout gauranga now what is gauranga gauranga is the name of lord krishna and it's a name it's a holy name of the lord so indirectly making fun of the holy name of the lord still these people who ended up chanting gauranga so many times just by hitting the hari krishna devotees in a video game they got the benefit of chanting the holy names of the lord this is known as parihasya devanan devanan who was the you know many many years back i'm sure many of you all would have uh, heard the hari krishna hari ram song right one time shila prabhupad uh, when that when the song came out dam maro dam hari krishna hari ram all the devotees went to shila prabhupad and they were very disturbed they told prabhupad prabhupad this is so bad they are uh, you know blaspheming the devotees by singing the song you know, and everywhere and you know, that was the time when the jew temple was just the construction was just beginning you know and everyone in bombay when they were whenever they would see uh, hari krishna devotees they would sing that song and make fun so the devotees were very disturbed they went to prabhupad and they told him this prabhupad said don't worry very soon dam maro dam will be forgotten and hari krishna hari ram will be remembered and that's exactly what it is nowadays if you ask the, today's generation nobody even remembers the song but hari krishna hari ram everyone remembers basically so parihasya means making fun then the third thing you know sthobanam the word sthobham means as musical entertainment simply for entertainment of music people sing sometimes they sing bhajans sometimes you sing kirtans it's amazing you know uh, every single bollywood song that exists in the world can be sung using the hari krishna mahamantra so there are some devotees who are so expert 
they'll take the tune of a bollywood movie and they'll sing hare krishna hare ram using the tune so for for a lot of people who don't know the songs obviously they don't understand which music it is but for those who know the song for them in their mind that song only is running basically even if someone sings the lord's name for musical entertainment or for fun krishna rewards them and then helanam evava helanam means neglectfully sometimes when people sneeze they say oh god they say krishna they just take ram's name or krishna's name just while sneezing now even neglectfully we may chant his names but because one has chanted the name of, of the lord whatever sinful reactions were, were remaining on the way they get rewarded and that is what krishna is swalpam apyasya dharmasya kayato mahato bhaya even a small beginning will get us rewards and that is the first benefit of karma yoga do a little bit and you get a major result you get great results and that is so so amazingly important from uh, krishna's point of view the second thing that we can uh, derive as a benefit of chanting of uh, karma yoga is in karma yoga even if one fails failure is also considered as a success in krishna consciousness even if you fail that failure is considered to be a success krishna in uh, bhagavad gita second chapter this is verse number 48 so krishna is um, teaching us about the second benefit of um, practicing karma yoga he says yogasta kuru karmani sangam tyaktva dananjaya siddha asiddha samabhutva samatvam yoga uchyate so he says perform your duty equipoised o arjun abandoning all attachment to success or failure such equanimity is called as yoga so in the process of yoga in the process of karma yoga there is no question of failure even if one fails failure is considered to be a success in krishna consciousness this is not so in the outside world if one fails in the outside world no one will consider it to be your success if one wants a degree one has to pass like for example one of our devotees went for a scientific conference in calcutta many years back and um, um there was a guy over there who had come to come for that conference who gave him his uh, visiting card and when this devotee read what his you know um his qualification he was amazed it it said phd bf so this devotee has never heard of anything like that you know never heard a degree like that phd bf we asked him what exactly is this degree phd bf he said uh, it means phd but fail i attempted to you know become a phd but i failed in it but because i attempted i didn't want to not mention that in the degree you know i put it over there phd bf you know so if you fail in a course if you fail in any kind of a examination will anyone give you the job or give you the degree you know will one get success the answer is no obviously not but in krishna consciousness when you start on the process of karma yoga even if one fails after having started it krishna is so kind that he will reward us therefore he says one is never lost on this path whatever we have collected on this path however small its value is always remains with you our credits will never be lost if one has practiced spiritual life for a short while and dies he will continue the practice in his next life in fact 
Krishna will ensure that he is born in a rich family, in an aristocratic family, in a cultured family, so that he doesn't have to start with basics. He is already well established. He, his basic needs are taken care of. Now he has to directly focus on his spiritual uh, journey. It's not a bad deal at all. If one has practiced for a long period of time and then he dies, he is born in a family of devotees. So that in his next life, he doesn't even have to struggle to find a guru, find a path. He will directly start from the from where he left. The credits of serving Krishna is carried into the next life. It is never wasted. If one stops at 50%, then you will begin at 51%. The credit of serving Krishna, serving God, are carried forward to our next life. And that's so amazingly important for all of us as devotees and uh, people who are aspiring to practice spiritual life, to understand and to appreciate there is absolutely no failure on the path of Krishna consciousness. It is, there is always success. Such is the path of Karma Yoga. I'll give you an example. Um, this is a young boy. Now he's a little older. But uh, many years back, um, we happened to travel to London. And uh, the then president of the Iskand London Temple he was an amazing person. And he had a small boy whose name was Nitai. And this boy, literally, is just four or five years of age. Man, a five-year-old boy, you know. What amazing qualities he had. Unbelievable. No one told him. No one taught him. But somehow he had some fantastic abilities. Um, so, when he would go to school, and when he would, you know, interact with young boys and girls of his age, you know, there would be children that he would be playing with. I mean, four, five-year-old kids are like so immersed in playing, right? And these are little, little British kids. They're not even from the Vedic culture, no, no understanding of Indian culture at all. These are British kids. And they would come to play with this little boy. And he would encourage them to practice spiritual life the age of five, imagine. He would teach them how it is important not to eat meat. One little girl had recently moved into the neighborhood and she asked Nitai, this little boy, what is your name? And he said Nitai. And the little girl couldn't figure out, you know, and she didn't know how to pronounce Nitai, you know, the British uh, girl. And this little boy, Nitai, he taught her how to pronounce by breaking down the words. He said knee. He pointed out to his knee, saying knee, 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 say knee. And she could say knee easily. And then he said tie, you know. <laughs> and then he told her, you combine knee and tie together. That's my name, Nitai, you know. And this little girl, he became, she became so friendly to Nitai. And he began to teach all of them, his little children about Krishna Balaram, about how cows are so, so special to the Lord, how the Lord loves the cows, how the Lord loves all the animals, all the living entities in this world. And this little girl, she went to her mother and she said, I will not eat meat anymore. And the mother came out to fight with Nitai's mother. And Nitai's mother, she was so disturbed that you know, a neighbor is coming and uh, shouting at her saying, why is your child teaching my girls all these things? And Nitai's mother went and confronted him, asking him, why are you doing this? Why are you teaching little girls uh, this? You know what Nitai says? And this is just amazing. This is a five-year-old boy. Nobody taught him this. You know what he says? Why he's teaching these girls this thing? He tells his mother that they would suffer so much sin of eating meat. They are my friends. I can't see my friends suffer. Therefore, I am teaching them what I know and I don't want them to suffer. A five-year-old boy speaking such profound knowledge. Where do you think he get, got it from? Do you think it is from this life? Five-year-old children are just having fun. This is from a previous life. 
This is from a from a practice that he has done in his previous life, and this is not just one example. I can give you hundreds of such examples. You know, one of our devotees, uh, he's from Munich, and uh, he used to head Mind Tree at one point, and uh, he, he had when this many years back, he had a daughter who was one and a half years old, one and a half year old girl, and this girl, she could sing Gaur Arti without. any paper i mean obviously one and a half year children can't even read right so they hardly know to read but this girl would purana would sing the entire gaur aarti without any reference by heart you know i don't know how many of you all know what gaur aarti is but you can google it if you like you know gaur aarti is very complicated bengali not easy for even a adult to sing it easily you know very complex song and this one and a half year old girl effortlessly by hearted it you know and not just that she would sing it playing mridang i mean which one and a half year old child can play a play a mridang on her own right so these are i mean there can be no other explanation other than the fact that it has been carried from a previous life nothing else that can explain all this logically joining the hari krishna movement is almost like joining the mafia let me explain what i mean by that <laughs> in the mafia there is a rule the rule in the mafia is that you can enter it but you can't exit mafia doesn't allow you to leave you know you whether you want to enter is your choice but once you enter you can't leave it krishna consciousness is exactly like that you you whether you want to enter into the path of krishna consciousness or no is your choice but once you enter it krishna will not allow you to leave he will somehow other keep following you he is he will just somehow appear in your life in such amazing ways in london there was a devotee who used to chant 16 rounds got very focused in his spiritual practices and all but at some point he got totally fed up of practicing spiritual life you know and he decided i am done with spiritual life i he took the bhagavad gita threw it into the river he just threw his gita into the river you know saying that i don't want to practice spiritual life anymore and he said i am going back to all my old habits and uh, next day he told his wife i want to eat fish you know so many days i have not eaten fish let me get fish and let's eat it and he went to the market and bought a huge fish and the wife cut the fish open unbelievable inside the belly of the fish there was the entire bhagavad gita stuffed in you know they can imagine where this he threw it somewhere as a bhagavad gita came out of the fish and this man freaked out he just couldn't believe that krishna has come back in some ways so this is a true incident mafia don never leaves you krishna is almost like a mafia don when he loves someone no matter whether that person gives up on krishna or no krishna doesn't give up on the on his devotee and that's the whole idea behind uh, the benefit of krishna consciousness even if you fail you don't lose you continue from where you start where you left off the last life the next benefit of krishna consciousness of practicing karma yoga is freedom from reactions there are no reactions for our actions the path of krishna consciousness is a path where you are uh, free from reactions to your actions verse number 50 of the second chapter krishna is speaking about this he says buddhi yukto jahati ha ubhe sukruta duskrute tasmad yogaya yujjasva yoga karma shu kausalam he says a man engaged in devotional service rids himself of both good and bad reactions even in this life therefore strive for yoga which is the art of all work so krishna is inspiring arjun that no matter what action you do you do not get a reaction when you are on the path of karma yoga when we serve krishna all our previous reactions are gone but now whatever one does there will be no reaction which means typically it's called as a liberated state 
Therefore, we should remember that when we act as a stick in the hand of Krishna, I don't know how many of you all have gone to Udupi. This beautiful deity that you're seeing in front of you is from Udupi. This is Udupi Krishna. And he has a beautiful stick in his hand. If you ever wonder what that stick is, of course, the stick has many reasons. It's a coward stick. He, Krishna is a coward. And cowards always carry a stick on them. This is that stick. But the stick also has other uses. When there is a snake, a man takes the stick and hits the snake to kill it. But can you blame the stick that the stick killed the snake? The man hit the snake, not the stick. If one becomes a stick in the hand of Krishna, when we are a stick in the hand of Krishna, whatever we do, we are not doing it. Who is doing it? Krishna is doing it. We are just an instrument in his hands. This is the mood of a karma yogi. A karma yogi strives to act responsibly as a stick in the hand of the Lord. And whatever action one does, is actually, it is understood that Krishna is doing it through you. So, the, the snake is our actions. And the stick is we ourselves. When we are in the hands of Krishna, like a stick in the hand of a man that kills the snake, whatever we do in our life, we don't get a reaction for it. And uh, we live a life where every action of ours does not bring any reaction. Just like uh, I'm sure all of you all know about mercury. Now mercury is considered to be very poisonous when one drinks it. You drink mercury, you're dead. But the same mercury, when it is in the hand of a Vaidya, when it is in the hand of an astrologer, uh, sorry, of a healer, of a, of a doctor, that same mercury, if it is administered in the right quantity, it serves as a medicine. And therefore, the same activity, which is the cause of our bondage, action and reaction, but the same activity like mercury, when it is used in the service of the Lord, becomes therapeutic. It becomes medic medic medicinal. And it takes care of our sinful activities. And it actually becomes a cure. It doesn't act as a reactive agent. The, th the last, the fourth benefit of Karma Yoga, the last benefit of Karma Yoga is liberation. One gets liberated from this world. Krishna in the 51st verse of the second chapter, he says, Karma Jan Bhukti Yoga uh, bhakti yukto, sorry, karma jan bhakti yukto hi phalam tekva manishina janma bandha vinir mukta padam gachanti anamayam. He says, by thus engaging devotional service to the Lord, great sages or devotees free themselves from the results of work in the material world. In this way, they become free from the cycle of birth and death and attain the state beyond all miseries by going back to Godhead. And that's the idea of liberation from the material world. This is the last benefit of Karma Yoga that helps us go back, back home, back to Godhead, to the spiritual abode, achieving the state of Nirvan and going back to the spiritual world. So these are the various benefits of Karma Yoga. Now, we are going to be discussing a very interesting and a very important concept that Krishna introduces in, in this section of the Gita. He introduces a section, a, a concept known as two dharmas. There are two types of dharmas that every living being is to be associated with. So the first dharma is called swadharma. What is the meaning of the word swadharma? Swadharma means dharma connected to the physical self. So, um, duties. The dharma means duty. You can, you can call it as occupational duty, constitutional duty like that. So, there is a physical uh, dharma that is uh, dharma connected to this material body. As long as we have this body, there are some duties that are connected to it. And then there are... So, when we say uh, that the duty is connected to the material body, which means... Um, all of us, according to our, our psychophysical nature, 
we are, we are categorized into brahmana kshatriya vaishya shudra so according to our propensity there is a dharma that is waiting for us and not just according to the to the varna but also according to one's uh one's skills and one's abilities each one of us are gifted with something that gift is a gift of god to all of us whether it may be intellectual gifts it may be physical gifts it may be skill based gifts it may be musical gifts it may be logical gifts it may be anything so many types of gifts that human beings have our gift is a gift that god has given us and using that gift when we serve society it is known as swadharma it is dharma connected to this body so one one is we have a particular psychophysical nature and we do engage in particular duties but connected to this body there are many things else many other things like for example family is connected to this body taking care of the family doing that responsibility is also called swadharma uh second is taking care of the society we are all responsible for human society in some way or other because we have this human body doing that is known as swadharma or uh, taking care of children taking care of your own health all this falls in the category of swadharma what is the meaning of the word swa the word swa refers to oneself but this is on the external level the external self is known as swa but there is also an internal self which is a uh, more deeper and more stronger the swa changes as as soon as the body changes i'm sure all of you remember we had spoken in the initial part of the second chapter about how we are not this physical body but we are a spirit soul right the physical body keeps changing just like a dress keeps changing like you know we remove the old clothes and wear fresh clothes similarly when the body becomes useless we remove that body and wear a fresh body the moment the body changes the duty changes the duty that you did in your previous life is not the same duty that you do in the next life according to the body there is a particular type of duty the dog's body has a particular swadharma the human body has a particular type of swadharma so according to the type of body you have there is a particular type of swadharma that you do but there is a second type of dharma which is what krishna really emphasizes on which is known as sanatan dharma what is sanatan the word sanatana means eternal eternal dharma what is the eternal dharma of the soul so the, the swa dharma of the body keeps changing constantly so the eternal dharma of the soul never changes and what is the eternal dharma of the soul jivera swarupo hoy krishnera nityadas that is the eternal position of the of the living entity of the atma which is to be the eternal servant of krishna so we are all constitutionally servants of krishna unfortunately many people forget this fact that we are servants of krishna and engage only in swadharma in fact maximum of the world is so busily engaged in swadharma that we forget that we have sanatana dharma of course there are some people who are so busily engaged in sanatana dharma that they forget that they have swadharma also both are bad forgetting your swadharma is bad and forgetting your sanatana dharma is even bad so the idea that krishna introduces us to is a balance of swadharma and sanatana dharma it's not that for this you leave that or for that you leave this both are important and both are needed and this balance between the two is what krishna consciousness is about is what spiritual life is about when a living entity engages in sanatan dharma the living entity is almost like a fish in water and when a living entity does not engage in sanatan dharma is almost like a living entity like a fish out of water Now imagine a fish out of water how badly it is flapping how badly it is struggling how badly it is uh yearning to just get back into the water isn't it that's exactly the nature of the soul that does not have access to krishna consciousness 
when a living entity does not have access to Krishna consciousness, the living entity feels like a fish out of water. I am almost very sure that for those of y'all who have been attending these Gita classes for the last six months or so, at least a couple of months, I'm sure many of you are attending. The moment you attend these classes, the moment you hear the message of the Gita, it almost feels like fish entering back into water, isn't it? It feels so deeply satisfying because the message of the Gita, the message of the Bhagavatam, the message of Krishna consciousness is so innately natural to the living entity. Just like a fish in water feels so nourished and so satisfied, feels that this is where I belong. The moment a living entity gets exposure to spiritual life, genuine, authentic, bona fide spiritual life, the living entity feels exactly like a fish gone back into water. And that feeling of the fish going back into water is what is known as Sanatan Dharma. Why is it called Sanatan Dharma? This is what we have been hankering for from time immemorial. We have been struggling in so many lifetimes to find exactly this. You have no idea how many lifetimes we have struggled to find this path of Krishna consciousness. The day you come in touch with the genuine path of Krishna consciousness, that day you just feel I have reached home. That day you just feel I don't need to venture anymore. I don't need to roam around anymore, struggle anymore, search anymore. I have found my path. I have found my, my uh, most innate path, which I have been waiting to find. And that is what Krishna is recommending us to focus on. Swadharma means the duties are connected to the body. And Sanatan Dharma means the duties are connected to the soul. All day long, we have 24 hours every single day. Of the 24 hours, literally 22 hours you take care of Swadharma only. No problem. Do that. But at least 2 hours take, take out for your Sanatan Dharma. Bhakti Siddhanta had a very interesting way of putting this. You know? Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasat Thakur is the guru of Srila Prabhupada who is the founder of ISKCON. So Bhakti Siddhanta Sarastakur would tell his disciples something very interesting. He would tell his disciples to divide the day into three parts. 24 hours a day, divide into three parts, which is eight hours each. He would say eight hours, focus on your economic pursuits, on money. Whatever you need to do on money, spend eight hours doing that. And then, Bhakti Siddhanta would say, eight hours, take care of your body. Sleep, eat, bathe, you know, take care of your family, spend good time with your family, whatever you need to do, eight hours. And then he would say, eight hours, take care of your soul. So eight hours is what Bhakti Siddhanta would recommend to, for spiritual practices. Now when Srila Prabhupada went to the West, and told his, some of his disciples in the Western world that eight hours you had to chant in a 64 rounds of chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra. They fainted. They said, impossible. We can't handle 64. Eight, eight hours. How do you practice spiritual life for eight hours? Prabhupada said, okay, fine. Don't do 64 rounds. Do 32 rounds at least. Four hours. They said, impossible. We just can't do it. No way. Four hours we can chant. Then Prabhupada said, okay, fine, two hours, 16 rounds, nothing less than that. And that's how we came to two hours out of, out of the eight hours. <laughs> Ideally, you divide your day into three parts, eight hours for your economic pursuits, eight hours for your body and eight hours for your soul. But if you can't do that, at least two hours take out for your spiritual practices. So Sanatam Dharma. While 22 hours of your day, you are focusing on Swadharma, your contribution towards anything that is connected to the body, at least two hours a day, focus on something that is connected to the soul, something that is connected very closely to your deepest and innermost aspect. And interestingly, when we are seriously engaged in Sanatana Dharma, 
that is actually the most satisfying experience of your life that part will actually be most satisfying for you so therefore i highly highly recommend all of you all please take this advice of krishna very seriously and spend some time understanding and trying to find the right balance you know most of us we are uh, we we don't know how to find the balance in our lives and we are you know moving from one side to another some day we say no need of spiritual life at all i want to be a full materialist you know i want to enjoy my life another day we say this material life is useless i want to be a full spiritualist i want to just dedicate my life and we are lost in the pendulum of going from this side to the side without knowing what exactly do i want to do the idea of uh, krishna recommending both of it is the idea of balance just like the food for the car is different from the food for the driver when you are going on a long drive you not only need to fill up the car with petrol but you need to fill the tummy of the driver also with food you might say why the driver needs you know the car is more important than the driver no both are important here is something very interesting that uh, uh the former ceo of coca cola said in his uh, speech he said life is like a game in which you're juggling some five balls work health family uh, friends and spirit and while you're juggling these five balls one of them is a um, rubber sorry one of them is a rubber ball and the other four are glass balls if you're juggling glass balls if one glass ball falls what happens it bounces back never it breaks it shatters isn't it but the rubber ball always bounces back most people in life they give so much priority to work so much emphasis to work that they forget that the other four are glass balls and one of them falls they lose it forever and so many people in this world they take the rubber ball so seriously that they forget the friends they forget the importance of the family they forget the importance of their own health and most importantly they forget the importance of the spiritual life so let us take the words of krishna very seriously and try to find a balance more importantly let us try to find a path where we can really prioritize our spiritual life seriously and give it a good amount of time energy effort and enthusiasm practice and i can assure you you will never repent it will be the best best thing that you have ever done in your life and this is the most important decision that you have ever taken in your life i'm all i'm saying is you don't even have to give 2 hours at least begin with giving half an hour that's not too much if somebody says i don't even have 5 minutes for my spiritual life that person has not at all understood the value of the glass ball and some day when the person goes through loneliness when the person goes through frustration when the person goes through sadness that's when you understand something has gone wrong in my life i earned a lot of money but somewhere i lost my soul i lost myself and that's when we people really start repenting and lamenting but then it becomes too late so let us take this advice of krishna seriously the advice striking a balance between swadharma and sanatan dharma hari krishna i'll stop here uh, just one announcement two announcements in fact before we open up for question answers uh, over a, over the last few weeks we have been making some announcements which i thought i'll uh, reemphasize again um we're going on a yatra to vrindavan uh, in december many of you all have already registered for this yatra i already welcome those who have registered for the yatra uh, we uh, still have a few seats left for those who want to register for the yatra please do register immediately uh, i can assure you that this will be the most powerful investment you can make uh, in in your sanatan dharma kota and this will revive your spiritual consciousness and when you enter vrindavan it will almost seem like a fish entering back into water vrindavan will actually feel like home for those who have never been there you will really feel so much at home and so much connected all the sacrifices are worth making to reach vrindavan and uh, for those who are skeptical december is too far away 
I can't decide for now. Don't worry. You still you can register yourself, and you know you have all the way till November to pull pull out if you like. You know, if somebody wants to cancel, you can still cancel it all the way till thirty days before the yatra. So you have a big window open. You know, but uh, once our seats are full, then we can't take you in last minute. You know, usually this is what happens. Most of the people wake up ten days before the yatra and they say, "Please take us." Like you know. Then it's usually very difficult for us to make adjustments. So my recommendation would be that you know for those who uh, even considering a one percent thought on coming to Vindavan, please register now, get your tickets booked now, and I and I can assure you, Krishna will make a way. As I told you all, you know, solve our purpose, our mission. You put a little effort, Krishna will clear a lot of obstacles on the path, and you will uh, really find the yatra opening up very smoothly for you all. um and the second announcement is um i'm doing this course on self acceptance um I, i'm sure many most of you all would have seen the posters of the course by now um this is going to be one of the most powerful courses you have ever attended it is going to be a great investment in your personal journeys of uh, life um especially for those who are uh, struggling with a sense of purpose who are struggling with lack of confidence a lot of insecurity internal struggle especially in relationships you must attend this course and it lack is a very powerful tool and transformative experience for all of you and you could also for the course but not for vrindavan vrindavan is a very closed group it's only for people who are attending these classes but for the self acceptance course if you want to invite anyone especially anyone you feel needs it please do feel free to invite we are opening up the course for anyone and everyone to come and uh, join in because it's a very important course that will help so many people thank you very much now we can have some question answers with raini hari krishna hari krishna prabhu ji i think you very rightly said fish out of water and that's what happened when uh, i think for two weeks or three weeks in between when you had been to char dam we couldn't attend any of your sessions and that was uh, something like a withdrawal syndrome for me at least and i used to always every tuesday i look forward for it i don't keep any appointments after 6 o'clock and uh, irrespective of whoever the patient is but this was definitely what you said was very true and i also believe in one more thing as what you rightly said when the driver of the car has to drive a long distance the stomach has to be full <laughs> and i always uh, make a statement when madhya pradesh is empty uttar pradesh doesn't work <laughs> good so, uh, so i had show before a surgery even today this morning when we had a surgery at about 10 o'clock i saw that my staff was fully fed so the next 4 hours nobody is going to move huh. so uh, that we ensure the fact we are very, very true and but one thing the withdrawal syndrome was a bit too much so <laughs> for me to take it <laughs> Thank you so for nice. being so sweet. Thank you, thank you for being so sincere, Mohanji. Absolutely, sir. Not it's it's an eye opener in many respects. And for me specifically, I stay alone, and uh, so this is something uh, most refreshing. What do you call it? As an uh, oxygenator, I would say. Uh, every Tuesday, I really look forward for it. Thank you, and Thank you, uh, irrespective of whatever the case is. Thank you very much, sir. Very good, sir. Very good. Sorry, was it me? Um, Samjay, I just want to know that in the last slide there was a there was a saying uh, or something that was put there. A value has a value only if it is properly valued or something. I wanted to just see that again. Oh, at the bottom of the slide. Value has a value only if its value is valued, right? Very true. <laughs> okay. Very true. Thank you. Can I can I just chip in for a minute? Yes, I I still remember about thirty years thirty about thirty years back. Uh, see, I've been in practice for forty three years now. So about thirty years back, one of the staff was new, and I did say something in front of the patient. to the staff the guy was a little bit irritated and uh, definitely much more anger so the anger bled but then immediately the patient didn't say anything 
once i finished the treatment the patient took me to the side and he said if you get if you give peanuts you get monkeys to work for you <laughs> so you pay them well and you treat them well they work well so that's the lesson which i learned but in a hard way from the patient thank you thank you very sir. true thank you riti ji riti ji you had a question can't hear you okay anyone else any other questions or comments uh, yes me i prabhu ji yes yes this is pragada uh, so i just uh, wanted to understand one thing like you said that uh, uh, your bhakti uh, i don't know is a kind of proportional to your karma even if you do it unconsciously or like all the examples that you gave in the beginning that even if you do it uh, with you know hatefully or with vengeance or something it will come back to you and, and krishna will uh, you know uh, guide you into it into it so uh, why exactly are we then trying to do uh, actually at least i feel very guilty when i don't uh, do what i think i should be doing in uh, you know my pursuit of krishna consciousness so uh, uh i was just wondering whether whether consciously do it you do it or unconsciously do it or whether you uh, do it uh, as a matter of like 8 hours you said or 4 hours or 2 hours or in my case it is even much lesser so uh, you get the fruit of uh, krishna's love and blessings and guidance so if that is so what is the uh, you know gain in being so uh, devoting 8 hours a day for krishna uh, consciousness and krishna uh, you know uh, you are uh, what do you say uh, you are dutifully being spiritual and all is it that what you are saying that you will start at you will reach 1% you will reach 10% you will reach 50% and then you will start from 51% and on that is it that we are ultimately trying to attain that 100% and that is why whatever few steps we take is uh, good enough or not bad enough so if you take very deep you travel very deep into it then you maybe attain 80% and then you start from 81% so is it that that distance that we are trying to cover to reach god so what is it i just wanted to understand thank you for asking this question uh it's a very uh, interestingly put question so it's not about the numbers let me uh, reiterate and ex- help you understand it it's not about the numbers it's about the sincerity so the reason i was putting numbers is just to help a layman understand that uh, you're not losing anything basically just to help a layman who is not at all uh you know um interested in spiritual life to understand that spiritual life is very different from the way regular life works you know so those numbers are just from that context point of view you know but from those who are uh, genuinely uh, seeking spiritual life and those who are serious about their spiritual journeys it's not about numbers at all it's about your connection with god and uh, for any person who is uh, sincere about the field in which he is engaged like for example a student or somebody is working in an organization you know most of the very sincere students and very sincere workers in organizations they don't they don't exactly study for marks they study because they love to study uh they start at least they, that's what it should be uh, ideally you know uh for those who work it's not that they work because they get money money cannot be and should not be the primary motivator that motivates you to work it can be one of the secondary or tertiary or maybe the fourth motivator you know but the primary motivator has to be the fact that i love to do what i do and uh, that is also the primary motivator in our spiritual journeys i chant not because i i want to reach 80% or 90% close to krishna i chant because i, I want to love krishna and uh, chanting is my means of trying to develop my love for krishna because uh, it will help me remember krishna so much it will help me uh, internalize uh, because there is no difference between krishna and his holy names when i chant the holy names of the lord i am actually associating with the lord so these are more personal and uh, real deeper reasons why we chant the holy names of lord 
yes those numbers are also true but those numbers don't matter to somebody who is really a devotee of krishna just to give you a small example to uh, help you understand this even better and from a more devotional perspective there was a great devotee of the lord named ramanuja acharya who was a very exalted vaishnav uh, you know a few hundred years before uh, and uh, um, he lived in a place known as kanchipuram and uh, in kanchipuram there is a temple known as varadaraj so varadaraj is one of the most exalted and beautiful deities of lord vishnu and varadaraj was actually a very powerfully manifested and he would speak to some of his devotees actually so there was one particular devotee whose name was kanchipurna this place was known as kanchipuram the deity was known as varadaraj and this devotee was known as kanchipurna and he would serve varadaraj by uh, doing the chamar the whisk you know for the lord and all day long he would be standing in the altar only and fanning the lord and the lord varadaraj and this kanchipurna would have conversations just like you and me are talking they would have conversations you know so ramanuja acharya once asked kanchipurna a question to ask varadaraj very interesting question he said please go and ask your ask ask the lord varadaraj if at the time of death when i am dying at the time of death i don't chant the holy name of the lord what will happen to me now we know that when we chant the holy name of the lord at the time of death we go back to the spiritual world right so ramana acharya had this doubt that all life long i am chanting the holy name but at the time of death somehow i forget to chant or i don't chant the holy name of, of of the lord what will happen to me so this is a doubt that he had and he wanted kanchipurna to ask varadaraj and kanchipurna went and asked varadaraj sincerely you know ramana acharya is asking this question what do i answer him you know what varadaraj told him varadaraj told kanchipurna go and tell ramana acharya that if he does not remember me at the time of death i will remember him yeah i will remember him yes imagine the answer of the lord so these numbers don't make a, don't make any difference to the lord you know the lord is not interested in these numbers what is interested is in the sincerity the lord is not even interested in the rule you know that i you have to remember krishna at the time of death he is not interested in all that what is interested is in your sincerity so all the examples that i gave and all the you know different inspiration the numbers all that is only aimed at one thing to help us become sincere devotees of krishna that's all and that's the essence of spiritual life i hope it answers your question pragya ji yes thank yeah. you so much thank you thank you yeah sets me thinking further <laughs> yes <laughs> thank you so much Thank you. That's good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prabhuji. Okay, very very Thank grateful you. to all of you all for being here. Not at all. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare